Hey folks, Ryan Sounds here, and I'm going to show you how I do injections. Uh, I've been doing intramuscular injections for almost seven years now, uh, every 10 days, or sometimes 12 or 13 or 14, depending on what I'm feeling like and if I forgot. Uh, so, the key with doing injections is to know that I think the best way to learn how to do it is to go in and have a medical practitioner or a nurse practitioner show you how and to learn a technique that works for you. Uh, I think everybody varies their technique and so the way that I do it is not necessarily, is not why I necessarily encourage you to do. Uh, it's just what works. All right. Uh, for me, I'll just say before I do it, I do it more slowly than some guys. Some You're taught to do it like a dart when you put the needle in, but I just can't do it that way. It freaks me out. So I go slowly, and again, over well over 200 shots later, I'm still doing fine. Um, I always keep all my stuff in a little package, and I always have a uh, container for biohazardous waste. Uh, I like going through Strohecker's Pharmacy because they give me all of my goodies, which includes uh, sterile pads and needles and syringes. So the first thing I always do is I open up um, my testosterone and I sanitize it with the sterile pad. And then the thing that I do, which others may not tell you not to, but I really don't think it matters because a lot of stuff is sterile anyway, is I use the other side of it then and I go the distance between my pinky and my thumb on my thigh and I sanitize that as well, just like that. All right, some people always different ones, which you can definitely do. I just don't see the need in wasting another one. When you get ready to draw up your testosterone, um, I first put it in, upside down, then I pull out, and then I push back in to get a vacuum seal, and then pull out again to pull out my tea, as you can see. Um, I go a little bit under a cc or 100 milliliters of testosterone. Um, just because after my histo, I just decided to go down slightly, but I haven't changed it much. And I always close that back up. All right, so then I have that here, and I pull it down to pull the T away before I get ready to switch the 18 gauge needle to the 22 gauge one inch needle. When I began using testosterone, I did a 22 gauge inch and a half needle. And after a while, looking at my thigh and everything, I'm like, why am I doing that? My muscle's right there. I don't need that big of a needle. Uh, so I switched to one inch, and it's much easier for me. Um, psychologically, it's it's e even better because it doesn't look so daunting since the needle's so much smaller. So then, after I pull that out, I grab my 22 gauge, one inch, and open it up. So it's ready to go. Then I take this off and I put it in my biohazard container right here. I always dispose of all my needles in biohazard containers. So I have that ready. I pull the lid off and I look to get it back up. Try to get most of the air out. I always flick it. I don't know if that really does anything. It's just what I do. Probably watched that too many movies on that. I remeasure on my leg, pinky on the knee thumb over here and I see where I want to go and I try to look and not hit where I see my blue veins just because I don't know if I hit them or not but sometimes it hurts like I hit capillaries or go through something I'm not supposed to be uh, I do what's called Z method so I squeeze my muscle like this before I inject I relax and remember to breathe like sometimes I have to do this now it's being filmed it's even worse all right Then I release it, pull back on the plunger, and then to make sure there's no blood, which there never has been, then I start injecting. Sorry, you can't really see this. Sometimes it's harder to inject than others. Today is pretty good. This is a thick oil. 
so it um, goes down a little slow. After I, I pull it out quick, even though I put it in slow, I pull it out quick. Then I immediately put pressure on that point and start to massage it. Uh, this helps, I think, with oil distribution. And I don't know if other people have, but every once in a while, I think maybe twice I've had, um, like I hit a capillary when I pull out the, the needle, then a huge spurt of blood comes out. Um, and I freak out. I freaked out when that happened. I know other people do too. Cause like, oh my God, am I going to die? You're not. You're fine. Uh, you just hit a capillary. So it may hurt a little bit, but otherwise you're fine. So then again, I have this. So I take this needle off. You can see there's a little bit of blood in there. And I dispose of that in the biohazard material. You never put that in the trash. All right. You can put this piece in the trash. There's no blood or anything in there that could contaminate someone if they got into your trash, which probably what doesn't really happen. But just in case, you can put that part away in the trash. But others should always go somewhere where you're not going to be putting that into the public trash. That's it. Um, if this video doesn't work, I'll try a new one next time with a different camera. Hope you all are doing well.